Hello, lovelies, and let's make a medicine bag part two, because I went to pause the other one as I was doing it and didn't pause it, and then when I unpaused it, I cut off the video, so let's try this again. Um, yeah, I, never mind. Okay, hi, it's Mama G gear, Mama G here, and something that's non-yarny. I'm sitting Indian style on the bed, so we're gonna make this quick. And it's an easy, fun thing to do. We're gonna make a medicine bag. And you can hear the cool medicine stuff in there. They're actually just stones and whatnot. But this is a medicine bag. Um, back when Rusty and I first started our company, we did a lot of Native American products and went to powwows and stuff. So yes, medicine bags were one of the things we did, and this is one of them. And you just crunch and spin it around, and you've got a medicine bag or a marble ball, or you could even put notions in here if you wanna make it crafty. Okay, so I use legitimate leather or suede. These are suede. The ones I did make on the other tape were uh, these two guys, okay? But it didn't film. So what I would recommend as far as finding leather, because it is expensive, but if you go at the end of the winter, which is be, would be now as I'm filming this, and you go to think places like thrift stores or um, Goodwill, Salvation Armies, such, a lot of their leather items are on discount, sometimes 25%, sometimes you get 50% off. What you wanna look for is sections, like a, like this, all right, like this one here was a leather skirt. And you can see from the, the um, pleats, and it was a leather skirt, but look at all the beautiful leather I have, or suede, I apologize, that doesn't have a seam in it. So this is, ideal. So I, I don't know how much I paid for the skirt, but I dismantled it and I'll be using that for something else like my leather bags, pocketbooks that I make and whatnot. But this I'm going to do um, the medicine bags. Then a plate or something circular. I have two different sizes because depending on how much leather I have available, depends on how size and how big the medicine bag is going to be. This, which is a sandwich size plate, is perfect for this guy here. All right, and I already tried in this spot, well, it'll fit. This particular piece of leather that I'm using, you can see was a pair of pants, and it does have a pocket, so I'm gonna try to not interfere with that pocket because I could sew this pocket onto another project. So I'm just gonna use as far over away from the pocket part as I can to make this medicine bag. So I'm gonna slide it over. Also things you need are a pen or a pencil, something that you can write on the back side of your suede or leather. Okay, also a hole punch and make sure, all right, so this hole punch I have here is really tiny. Can you see? I'm gonna upgrade it to the next size, hopefully. <laughs> How do you do that? Do you push that in? You push this out? What do you do? All right, yeah, it's been a while. I guess, yeah, let's let's do stupid things here. I think you just, there you go, okay, yeah. So I'm just snapping it into the next size because I want the holes to be big enough to put through the next item, which is, instead of using embroidery floss like I have in the past, I'm gonna try to use it with uh, hemp. Just plain old hemp. Actually, this hemp I think I got at the Dollar Twenty Five store a while back. So you got quite a bit. Um, let's see, you get two hundred and fifty-six yards, and it was a dollar at the time I bought it. It's probably a dollar twenty-five, but they do that have that at that incredible magic store. Also, a pair of scissors, and just line it up. Make sure I'm on my board. I apologize for the, well, I don't apologize, but the back, the backdrop here is an old vintage piece of material. I was looking for something to put down instead of just the piece of wood that I have. Um, and I, I didn't want to spend a lot of time looking for something super nice or white or whatever. So 
Just deal with the old, that's actually legitimate vintage material. I have some left. All right, so excuse the clang. We don't need that now. The pen I can put up there. We don't need that now. We got our circle. I'm gonna cut around the circle and I'm gonna save the pieces. Oh, uh, I don't know what, oh, there goes a bead. Oh, the pieces are over there. All right, I do save even little swatches like this because I do do artwork where I mishmash like a magpie items onto, um, onto art pieces. So I do save all these little pieces. Okay, so all I'm gonna do really at this point now is cut around the edge, and I'm gonna really try to pause you legitimately this time. Oh, by the way, it's Mama G Gear. If you like what you see, consider subscribing, and please leave a thumb. All right, that's the housekeeping. Hold on, I'll be right back. Oh, good, I did. I paused it and was able to put it back properly. I can't believe I did that whole video. I do that a lot, don't I? All right, anyway, so I cut the circle out. This is what's left of the scrap. Like I said, I'm going to keep this pocket because I'm going to use that in, you know, I might sew that onto um, another piece of article of clothing or whatever to have an extra pocket. So we're throwing that up there. Another thing I make, I found this. I also do um, gratitude beads and malas. And this is just some beadwork with the tassel and whatnot. And this is, these are gemstone beads. Um, yeah, I do, I, I, I used to do a lot of beadwork. Oh, dog just sat on the bed. Sorry for the wobbles. But I used to do a lot of beadwork and um, Buddhist, Buddhist stuff, Native American stuff, so on and so forth. Also, too, I showed in the first video, didn't show in this one. This is sinew. So when I'm making pocketbooks, and things like that, I hole punch, that's why this hole punch was so tiny, and then I sewed the sinew in there, and that's how I make the pocketbooks that I used to make. I don't know if I'll be making many more pocketbooks because of this process right here. So I cut this out, we're on the wrong side, here's the right side, so we have the lines on the wrong side, there's a little bit, you can see some of the pen, not a biggie, and we're gonna just do hole punches around. I'm going to go probably three quarters of an inch up. I'm hoping you can see that. And oh, are you serious? Maybe I'm going to be using the other one. It worked. Yeah, my hole punch. I, I have three hole punches and they're getting old because I use them a lot. So let's grab this one because that one didn't want to cut all the way through. All right, so I'm going to go about three quarters of an inch up and I'm going to go about three quarters of an inch away from the last hole. And I'm just going to judge it because, you know, I don't feel the need to, I'm just going to eyeball it, you know. Ideally, well, not ideally, you want the holes to be an even number. Okay, now I could go around here and count as I go which I've been known to do. But since I'm chatting with you, I can't do that. So as I go around, and you can see the little hole things are not coming all the way out. Again, it's because my hole punches are older and they're not as sharp as they used to be. But that's not a concern because it's actually fun to pick those things off. If you have any kind of OCD or anything that is a fun thing to do. <laughs> All right. And it, my hand is getting, it's, it's only, it's, it's metal on my hand and my hand is sweating a little bit. So, but what I'm doing right now is one of the reasons that I'm not making the pocketbook so much anymore, because this is painful for my uh, arthritis. And I'm not quite there, almost there. All right. Cause I was going to put you on pause, but since we're almost there, I'm just going to keep going and all right I'm going to stop there here's the first hole yeah, excuse my nails I, I just cut a bunch of my nails this one broke all the way off and I cut a bunch of my nails off nail yeah fingernails um oh, 
This is the first one. I'm glad I switched over because that doesn't want to come out. But the other ones will, you know, you could pick them out. Not a big deal. All right, so, and here's the last one I did. All right, so let's count around. Instead of me, you know, I could have counted as I went, but in, I didn't. So we'll just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. So we got an odd number. So we need 37. So we need to make it even. So 37, 38, 39, and 40. So I gave myself enough room where if I only needed to put two, I could have spaced them out a little more. But since I needed an even number, I just made them closer. It's not going to make a difference because you're going to weave that all in and it's going to fold into the bag. All right, so now we got that done. The fun part is picking all these little dots out, which I usually do by hand. And it's this is actually fun, but I won't bore you with my OCD. <laughs> oh gosh, the things that occupy little minds. And that one is going to be a pain in the butt because it doesn't want to part of it didn't unhook but anyway let's let's get I know I'm sorry just deal with this for a second because <laughs> obsessive compulsive neurotic behavior I don't suffer from insanity I enjoy every blooded blessed miss it, minute of it yeah, I can't even sing all right well I can't sing but I messed up the words in my made-up song all right Oh, come on. See, I should pause you. But I'm afraid if I pause you, I'll do the same thing I did last time and not hit the right button. All right, so I got the holes out. Now, I'm going to use hemp. You can use, oops, sorry. You can use embroidery floss. You can use yarn. You can use yarn. Yeah, you could use yarn. The only thing with yarn is if you keep pulling on it, it might start to, you know, start fraying a little bit. I don't know. All right, there we go. So we're going to start from the, this is the right side. This is the outside of the medicine bag. So I'm going to come into it with this because I want it to end, I can show you with these, with the two pieces sticking outside. All right. And what's really cool is by using a nice big darning needle, you can do this and just weave the needle in and then pull it through piece of cake. I actually can go for a piece of cake. Well, I still have some donuts left, so I might have a donut and weave it in. This is how easy these are. It's just that the, you know, the leather, if you're paying for the leather, it's expensive. Like, my gosh, I saw little pieces of leather at a craft store, which will remain nameless but it begins with an M um, and they, they had these like little tiny pieces, like one of these for, it was over 10 bucks. It's like, what are you nuts? That seems expensive when you can go, like I said, go, you know, and even ask people if they have old leather jackets, but you want to find ones that don't have lots of seams. That's the key. Cause it's hard to do anything like this where you're cutting into a leather piece that has, oh, again, I just threw all the beads rolled on the floor, which means the cats will be playing with them. Brain. Uh, okay. So that's, that's that. I weave that all in and I'll take the needle out and put it on the dish. All right. So now I'm just pulling it open, but I want to make sure I don't lose that into it because I already weaved that in. So now you see it's almost completely flat. It's kind of like a little cone. And that's where I'm going to judge. got kind of a long tail here. So I'm going to pull from this side, hold it, and then slide it. So that what I'm doing is I'm tightening up this. I'm making this less long. All right. And I know you probably know how to do that. So, so now it's almost completely flat and I still have some stuff left. 
So now we get our scissors back, give it a snip. And now that my darn beads are on the floor, and then really it's a matter of pull here and slide. But we're going to put a bead on it. Now, the beads I had there, let's see what we got. Let's find a bead. I don't feel like looking on the floor right at the moment. The bead you want to be tight enough where it, let's see, tight enough to where it um, is going to fit. Now, this is, I guess they're plastic or wood. You want to be able to fit both pieces in. I usually put one in and then work the other one in afterwards because I could pull as I go and that helps to guide the other, other piece in, see? All right, so now we have those. And let's see if this one works. Yeah, there you go. And, and since we just did it, it's going to be a little wonky, but once you've had it folded like this for a while, I could show you on this leather how it actually still it accordions on its own because it's getting used to that bend so don't don't fret that it's not you know all laying nicely which it is actually laying nicely but there's your medicine ball i mean medicine bag all right and this is really super long what i'll do now is on these ends i could just tie fairly good sized knots or put two other little beads but if you want to do a knot, I went around once, I went around twice, or went around three times, and then four times, and then with my fingernails, I'm going to just push it so that the, the reason I'm doing that instead of just one time, so it's going to be a fatter knot, okay? Because I don't want that knot to go through the hole on the bead. So I think we did that four times, so that's one go through again two, go through again three, go through again four. It's a little harder with the jute, but you know, if you had just regular thread, it wouldn't be as difficult as this. But And then I'm gonna pull it tight, pull it with my fingers. So I've got a, a, a thicker knot, so the ball, the, the bead is not gonna hopefully go through that and there we go. So it's there. And then you put your stuff in and you wrap it around. And you've got a cool little, the bead's a little bigger than I would have chose, but since the other ones fell on the floor, you're just dealing with this one. And I could, you know, untie it and replace it if I want. But yeah, there's your medicine bag. You can use it. Like I said, you could put anything you want in there. These are great for kids. Kids really do like this uh, idea because they could put their little special magic stuff in there that they have like all their little trinkets and um, when I did sell these back in the day I, I a lot of them were uh, little kids or like oh I could put my little jewelries in there and it just makes it special or if they have nightmares or whatever you could put whatever in there because the power of suggestion is strong so if you say oh let's put these you know magical whatever's in there and that's going to keep you from having nightmares and just put this you know under your pillow you won't have nightmares and you'd be surprised how well that works because the power of suggestion is amazing and speaking of nightmares I also um, used to make dream catchers and I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying that I probably have made over a few hundred uh, dream catchers and I often made them for a friend of mine who was a psychologist that worked with a lot of children and adults, but a lot of children. And um, I used to make them for him and he would give them to his clients. But I just try to do a bow, but it's kind of wonky. But anyway, yeah. So that's our me medicine bag. Unconventional tutorial from Mama G Gear. And, um, yeah, have a great day, guys. Uh, have a Yarnalicious day for all you yarny crafters and a medicine bag day for all you medicine baggers. <laughs> okay. I love you guys. <laughs> Be well. See you next time. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you like, if you haven't already. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.